Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to be importing animations and then retargeting it to our character that we just imported here into Motion Builder. So to import um, animations, uh, typically coming from our motion capture system at the school, you're going to be working with FBX files. And uh, this would be the case if you're working with motion capture files from Mixamo. Um, and also later in the quarter, we're going to be looking at working at motion capture files from the BVH format because there's a huge library out there of motion capture files in BVH format that you can work with as well. So even if you don't have a motion capture system, you can dig through some of those animations and um, find some animations that you can use. But the process that we're going to use here to characterize these animations and assign them to our character um, is pretty much the same because it works with a skeleton. Um, there is another format that uses C3D. Um, typically don't use this format because the workflow is really really long to work with and we've worked with it before in the past and I would suggest if you can to either work with the FBX or BVH format. I find those to be the most straightforward and easiest and quickest to get you up and running animations into your games. So um, in the last video we created this girl model right and we saved it out and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a file save as right away and I'll do girl model underscore with animations and I put two L's in girl model before <laughs> um, so I'll save that and now this would be our working file for working with our character with the animations so um, I'm going to go over here to file and then motion file import and you can see I've got a bunch of FBX animations that you can download uh, to do the lab for this project this week so I've got defeated, fight idle, gunplay, hip-hop dancing, jumping, quick roll to run and walking Okay. So what I'm going to do is you could either do one of these files, which I wouldn't suggest because you could do all of them. And what I mean is if all of them have an identical skeleton, you can characterize that skeleton from that one animation, which would be the case from the motion capture system that we're working with, and be able to retarget all these animations in one shot. So um, what I'm going to do here is select all of them and hit open. And uh, you'll see that it brings up this menu and it has all of the different files so you can check on and off which ones you want to import um, you can also check their start and end time so if you know where the start and end times are you can change where they come from um, and my suggestion is to use create in the same hierarchy when doing this rather than merge in all models so I'm going to do create in the same hierarchy and go to import and uh, you can see here that it brings in a skeleton character so this is the one for the walk Here's another one for the, um, I think this one was the roll animation. Uh, we've got another one here where it's jumping off of a high ledge. And we've got the idle and so forth. And if you need to rename these, you can rename these um, after the fact as well. So uh, this is another set from Mixamo. So you can see it's Mixamo 1, and then we've got Mixamo, which is our original girl character that we have here. But I'm just using Mixamo 1 here for the example. And what we're going to want to do is take one of these takes, and um, we're going to want to um, take one of these takes and we're going to want to characterize it as a skeleton so that we can drive our animation here with it. Now the problem is they're not in a T-pose, right? Our original character was in a T-pose and we were able to characterize it fairly easily and uh, these characters are not but we can force them into a T-pose for characterization purposes. So what you need to do is you need to go into the scene view and find the rig of the animated character that you imported. So that, that would be the animations that you either brought in from the motion capture system or from some other file source. And use the right click and then go to select branches to select all the branches for that uh, animation. Now once you have those selected, when you right click on the selection, there is an option here for zero. You go to zero and then rotation just rotation and you'll see that it'll snap 
our character into a t-pose, which will put it in a situation where we can characterize it. So to characterize this, we need to be able to create a skeleton, but we're not getting that option here that we had before, right? So to get that option back, you click on the blue Vitruvian Man button here, and go to Define, and then Skeleton. And what that'll do is it'll create a new character for us to work with. So back here in our navigator, we've got the character definition open up again, right? And what we could do is, just like we did before with the other one, drag and drop it, and it will auto-fill these. And if your animation, for some reason, doesn't have the proper naming convention, you could do this bone by bone. So now we have this, we can click on the Characterize option, so the little checkbox. Uh, this is going to be a biped. And uh, now we have that character in here, in our Characters window. So if you look in your navigator, we've got Girl Model, and we've got Character. So I'm going to do um, rename character here to motion capture animation. Alright, so it's going to be motion capture animation. And you can see that it changes the naming up here. So now, um, if I hit the play button, we lose the T pose, which is fine because it's still characterized. And if I want now, I can now drive our character model with the animation. So if I click the little drop down here where it says character and select girl model, and then under the source, go to motion capture animation, you can see here now the animation is now driven by her. So if I hit the play button, it'll play through. And the motion capture animation is now driving our character. Um, and you can switch between all of the different takes. So I go to this one and hit play, and it does that for every single take now. Just doing some Tai Chi here. Um, this one, this is that idle. Turn on the loop. Um, if I drop down here, play. It's a nice little dance. and so forth. This is her dropping from the ceiling. Pretty cool. So all the animations have been retargeted successfully. All right, so this is pretty much the whole lab uh, for this week's assignment. I want you guys to characterize your characters and then apply the animations to the characters. And uh, next week we're gonna start building um, control rigs out that you can control your animations with. So um, make sure you have your animations controlled, uh, created and controlled. So I want you to uh, complete this lab and also um, do this same process uh, with your characters for this week. So now that we have that, I guess I can head back over to the original and uh, save this out. If you need to um, rename the tapes, the takes are down here at the bottom. And you can go in and actually rename these. So this take one was um, the defeated. So if I right click and go to rename, call it defeated, and so forth. So you can rename all of the different takes there. And you can see it comes up. Actually, I think I might have done the wrong one. This one was defeated. And you can see that it changes the name here in the drop down as well. So you can identify the different animations. So go through, rename each of those different animations, and make sure you save this out and hand it in uh, for your lab assignment this week. All right, that's it. Thanks.